everything from your watch to your intelligent phone to a pacemaker to the software that runs a nuclear power plant, all of this is power. All of this uh, mechanical uh, dependence we have now is run by people who uh, are responsible for designing and developing and deploying and maintaining computing artifacts. We want the people who are working on those artifacts to care about the human impact, the consequences of what they do. That to me is computer ethics. And part of what I do is to try and think of new ideas and new applications in computer ethics and then to get the word out through journal articles, through uh, conference papers, and then helping to organize both journals and conferences now. Privacy has been an important issue for a lot of people. I've done a little writing on that. At the moment, I'm working on cloud computing, but my focus, the focus at the moment that I found most exciting is I'm dealing with robots and other artificial agents and trying to decide how humans are going to live together with these intelligent beings that aren't carbon-based like us, aren't even bio biological, but are mm, silicon-based. And I won't claim that they're life forms because it turns out that's controversial, but they certainly act like entities with whom we can interact. Two colleagues and I, one from Minnesota, one from New York, have been working on what we call e-trust. We know what trust is between two physical people, or at least we've talked about it a long time. What happens when you're trusting somebody who you think is a human through electronic means, email, chat, Facebook? Uh, what about if that other thing is in fact uh, something that's programmed rather than something that's growing? And then what if two artificial agents are dealing with each other. How, what does trust mean between programs, pieces of software? First of all, there are killer robots. There are military robots right now that are killing people. Some of them are done by remote control. Many of them are becoming increasingly autonomous. That is, in the old days of these robots, they were really more like puppets, almost like computer games that had a bite. Uh, people would be jockeying for position and then pulling the trigger. And so it was just like a remote control. Now, as these devices are becoming more and more sophisticated, they are gaining the possibility of taking the shot themselves. If we have machines on their own killing people, you can just see the Terminator kind of implications. I was just in, at a conference in Canada and talking to the people who make these devices. And they fly, they're on the ground, they're under the water. They've got lots of these devices and the militaries are very interested in them because you, you, your own soldiers don't get killed as much if they're far away from the action. The farther the human gets from pulling the trigger, the more you have to trust that the machine is gonna do the right thing. Some people say, well, if you can't make it 100% correct, you should never release it. Problem with that is sometimes the software can do better than humans, and autopilots are a wonderful example. Even if autopilots occasionally make a problem, and even if that problem kills people, it still may be better to have the software if humans make more errors, more fatal errors, more often. Negotiating that tension takes wisdom, and even though ethicists for thousands of years haven't been dealing with computers, they've been dealing with questions where they're making trade-offs. And so what we're trying to do in computer ethics is to both educate the general public as to how important these issues are and also try to educate computing professionals and our students about how they can make these decisions more wisely.